So, uh, welcome back to um, Get to Know Your Coach. Joined today by um, coach of the current league leaders, Al Seelan. Welcome, coach. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. A um, couple of questions. We have to start with the, with the main one so we can get that out of the way and get on to a little bit more fun. COVID, how has it affected you so far? Is there absolutely no training, individual training? Do you see the players? How is it, or are you just part of the moment? Well, for now, um, we're trying to, well, to do individual trainings and, and, and in groups of four, of four uh, outdoors. Since we're not allowed to use the pitch yet, and uh, you know, we're doing the Zoom sessions as well, right? so we're going to have one uh, tomorrow. So, you know, we're trying to, to, to do as much as we can for now. And hopefully, this thing will, will, uh, will get back to tomorrow soon. If there's an agreement between the health department and the, the MFA to, to allow us to, to do some sort of uh, training. Because, you know, um, on the 11th of April, we should be back to, to do. Probably, coach, I, I imagine, um, I'm no expert in it, but if you start to play games on the 11th, they need a little bit of training before then. You can't just go straight in here, and that's where you pull yeah, muscles. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was We restart on the 11th, and the league has to restart a month after. Yeah. Because well, at least three weeks after. Yeah. Because you need to recover three or four weeks without uh, match fitness. Of course. It's, it's, it's dangerous for the injuries, you know, and then uh, it could affect a lot of other players injury wise, so they need to be careful what they're doing. But, you know, we have to adapt and then uh, see what happens. Cool. Right, that's cool, but out the way, let's move on. Um, so first question is, after you lose a game, how long does it take you to go back to some sort of normality in your life, in your persona? So you've lost the game, how long before you start to sort of come, come out of that? Uh, three, four days, three, four days. Do you, um, do you um, after a loss, do you attack that straight away in the dressing room or do you wait for a few days or a day before you speak to the players or do you, do you take it straight away after the game in the dressing room? Um, to be honest... Um, Not that you've lost a lot of games, so <laughs> it's not. quite a long time since you've had to do it. <laughs> yeah, um, let's say I tackle it, I tackle it more, um, more in a way, um, if I see lack of commitment, lack of uh, work and work and work and stuff, then yes, I tackle that there then, but when it comes to um, tactical reasons or whatever happens during the game, you know, try to say a few things, but then we analyze more into detail when the time comes to the end week. Perfect. Best moment in football? <laughs> Best moment in football. Move to England. Yeah, yeah, to my first game. So, it was your first game? Yeah, what was that? Was that against the switch? Ah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you could score every day. Every day, too, yeah. So. Up with that best, best, uh, That's your best memory of, of really. Well, you know that many memories. You know that were, you know maybe better than that, but that was that was special. special. That was the, the first. I've arrived. Yeah, exactly. And I suppose that what they were in the, uh, the second division and other yeah. division, right? So was it a home? Yeah, it was home. So you would have had quite a few spirits. That was, you know, they tend to sell out pretty well there, so it would, it would have been quite full. Yeah, it was full, full house. And amazing. Fantastic. So, of course, you then went on um, to play also with the Sheffield United and you also played a Blackpool, which I, you really surprised me with that one. So, there's a few things there. So, it brings me to my next question nicely, really. Um, football hero, past or present? Past. Past, past, past. Always past. Present at the moment in life. Who would it be? Hey. Present is, it's, it's hard, but she knows. I was, uh, I was always the, the guy who, who worked hard. So for me, I was a like Ronaldo. Uh, well, Don Messi is a, is, a, is a different planet, but you know, I would say, I would say for the will and the sacrifices, Ronaldo. Yeah, but I put him as, as, as first in the past. <laughs> I was having all those uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. Because yeah, I was going to ask you which one. Yeah, so both of them. Yeah. Um, Daniel, how many languages do you speak? 
Ten. I think you just won the league on that one alone. <laughs> Can I ask you what they are? So you've got English, Maltese, French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Arabic, Russian, Bulgarian, Serbian, Maltese. I speak Scouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is a language of its own anyway. So wow, that's really impressive. Fantastic. Um, uh, I, I've been looking forward to asking you this particular question. Um, do you support a foreign team? Yeah, I do. Actually, two teams. One in Italy, one in England. Uh, and the Italian one first? It's Rome. It's Rome? Yeah. Roma? Yeah. yeah. Um, I love that club and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a people's, people's club. Yeah. So it's the next one, I think. Uh, it's Everton. Yeah. Everton, you see? Yeah, well it's, uh, <laughs> well it's, done. Uh, <laughs> you know, I like clubs that, that people it's Like a family club? club. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. You know, it's easy to say ah, I'm a Barcelona fan. Yeah, of course. Of I'm course. a Real Madrid fan, but you know, if I had to pick the clubs that I really enjoy watching, it's, it's I suppose Sheffield, is, Sheffield as well, in a way. It's, it's a very down to earth type of club, isn't it, as well? Yes, it is, but it's, it's you know, even if all the clubs I play with, they're quite, you know, um, but there's just something special about it. Could be because it's against Liverpool. And, uh, Could be. You know, it's, it's the thing is. And as, a ball, as Alan Ball said, once it touches your heart, yeah. it stays. So, I mean, it, and you played against him. Yeah, I played against was that a Goodison? Yeah, it was a Goodison. Yeah. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. So, you played on the Hollow Turf? Yeah. Unreal. Were you supporting them at that time? As yeah, 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 I was always, yeah, I was always, always, always followed everything, you know, and then, since I was a kid, I always liked that club. And, uh, and, I, and some of my heroes as well, love the club, like Sylvester Stallone and, and James who grew up through his movies and he's an everything fan. Absolutely, came on the pitch as well some years back. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's, wow. Fantastic. Good. Did you um, um, did you meet uh, did you get to meet some of the players that, uh, that you played against on that day? So there'd be a few, um, or was it just in our I had, I had, well, I still have a couple of like playing the Ligue team. We were friends and we were met many times in United. You know, when you live there, you 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 sort of in that area, that uh, Manchester, Sheffield area, so right? Leeds and so you know players. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, big world, but it's football, it's a small community. Absolutely. You know, we, we always meet, we always, you know, um, one day or the other, you're going to cross, you know. Uh, well, so Coach, listen, Daniel, if you, ever, if you ever have any contact with Big Duncan, let me know, because he's my old time hero. Yeah. And he's the one person I've yet to meet. I, I, not the one person, but I, he's just amazing. I love him to bits. And, and I think he, he's a, what a football club should be about, that, that sort of passion. You don't get many clubs coach anymore where, where um, players stay forever. Obviously for money, maybe family reasons, of course, players have to move on to better themselves, but, but it's very rare to get that, you know, player that stays and never leaves the club. And yeah, then, it's, it's not, it's not common, you know, these days football has become a business. Yes, of course. And only a few, few, few players really, those who grew up in the system, within the club and the youth levels, that opt to stay in their few months. Absolutely, it's not many of them. And the thing is, the market, the way it is at the moment, mm -hmm. worldwide, it's, 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 you know, it's very attractive. And they have a lot of experience with things. You know. Of course. I mean, there's nothing wrong in it, but, you know, fans want people to stay at. at, at they at call it loyalty, don't they? Loyalty, yeah, but the thing is, as soon as the player plays bad, they're the first ones to be mistaken. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's true. It's very fickle. It's very fickle. It, it goes both ways, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I, I admire those who do. Mm -hmm. You know, it shows. Commitment to the, to the course, but you know, at the end of the day, there's many reasons why people will even change clubs. Sometimes, many, many, and this is, this is one thing fans don't don't realize. Many times, they just change clubs not because they want to, but because the club wants them to. Yeah. But always, it doesn't come out to the public yeah. because they don't want to tarnish the image of the club and, and the players have to. Have to have it's to funny because you say that because actually, what we were just talking about, the big Duncan, he left Everton to go to Newcastle. And it, I mean, everyone was devastated, and everyone was, why would you do that? And it came out a long time afterwards, a long time afterwards, that he didn't want to go. He was told yeah. he had to go, they needed funds, and, and he was the one, and, and yeah, he just sent on his way. Players, the players are not allowed to, to, to comment on, on the, no. the reasons why. Those who do, they have a short career, they put it that way, because he fucked a lot. Um, so not to comment on it in any comments. The next club, 
So the angles are, are really quite complicated. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. You need, you need a lot of, a lot of input, a lot of cameras, a lot of expertise. Uh, because it's one thing putting the technology there, it's another thing knowing how to use it. Exactly. And what, what kind of technology, you know, now, okay, if we're, if we're talking about cost in football, we're not talking about the uh, industry. Right. So the margins of error can be a bit bigger. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Fair sure. enough, you know, we're not going to look for sure on the arm of it. No. If you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, it's, and I was always against the armpit or whatever yeah. the thing. It's, it's, yeah. For me, it always should be one foot over the. the one of the coaches yesterday actually said, because it's one of the questions later which you, uh, you, we come to, but he actually said that when it comes to the offside, he actually thinks an offside decision should be a full player. So yeah, a player should be, it should be one player offside. The body should be offside, not the fingernail, no, the elbow. Me, for me, no, for me, it should be a full body part that you can score a goal with. So, leg. Head. Okay. All right. Um, after football, what other sports do you enjoy? After football, for the martial arts, tennis. That's a little bit I like after football. Do you do you practice both? Well, martial arts not lately. It's been years since I since I've done, I've done boxing. With my brother is a professional boxer. Okay. So he was a little very now, but uh, I grew up in that environment and, and always practiced. Good lord. I mean, all this, all this practice was kind of sports. And tennis, I love tennis. And, uh, in our, in our, in our, when, I was, when I was younger in our countries, we, we used to practice every sport, you know, basketball, handball, you know, we, we played everything. Well, you know, I, I, I suppose, do, do, do you or do, do all your do, do your players know that you're a black belt and fake wonder? Uh, let's keep that. Let's keep that. <laughs> let's keep that. I was going to say, you know, extra training. It's not going to argue, right? It's good for whatever coach. Uh, to, be, to be fair, they don't, they don't argue. I have uh, an excellent group of players yeah. where you know, they, there's a common understanding. And they know, chose. They know exactly what they're, what they're expected to do. They're doing it excellently, so you know, I can't complain to anyone. Gotcha. Um, it's an easy one for you. What's your favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Favorite movie? Bloody My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. What type of music do you listen to? Country. Well, I, I've started laughing, but I'm not going to because you just told me you're a black belt, so I just say, well, good music, well done. Well, that's it. No, but it's an unusual selection based on where you come from. I mean, you've got your whole, your whole family is not to be famous, but I'm probably going to do it. So, this is a nice little story about it. Yeah, the 
beginning. If you don't want to answer any of the questions, you can take the Fifth Amendment, okay? So no, I'm, 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 those are my amendments with me. I just know what I think, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, um, favorite singer? I'm going to go outside the box, Tupac. Oh, really? So cool. Well, that's different. Favorite holiday destination? Uh, favorite holiday destination? Not the one I've been to, but that's the one I want to go to, Santorini, Greece. Okay, so that, that's one for the. For yeah, that's the, one, that's one with all the best love when we can climb the escape. I'm always, I'm always, I'm always, I'm always um, yeah, interested in the Asian countries, China, Japan. Those are the places I would, I would pick for so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit outside the box guy and I go to, to the Maldives and all that. I mean, it's not, so it's totally different. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like to see the culture and, and yeah. the, 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 the way people live and, and you know, their, their, their past and history and all mm -hmm. that. And for me to go for a swim, I just pop around the corner and jump <laughs> the water. You know, it's not, for me it's not. You're not a beach guy, I mean, the holiday... I love, I love the sea, I spend my summer on the there that I, I like a fish in the water, but not for holidays. Holidays I'd rather go somewhere where I can learn something. Fantastic. Right then, you're going to send you to a desert island now. So you're going to a desert island for six months, on your own. What's three things that you would take with you? People are to love. There's a desert island, you're saying. An island, just you, and you've got to be there for six months. What would you take with you? Unlimited supply of water. Helps. Unlimited supply of food. Helps. And a dog. And a dog? It's a cool one. Never thought about that. Dog. Company. Okay, no, no alcohol then. No. If you could change any one rule in football, what would it be and why? The foul. The foul? What, everyone could just kick each other? You're yeah, okay with that? For it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're talking rugby now, right? Yeah, yeah, let's, be, yeah let's, be, let's be a bit let's be a bit you know, because we've got too many uh, this, this is where, you know, it's just... Stop, uh, start, stop, start. Uh, apart from jokes, you know, just people dying for all sorts of things. <laughs> Alright. Uh, if you could work as an assistant coach under any current manager in the Premier League, who would it be, and again, why would that be? Pep. Under Pep? Yeah. yeah. Because uh, that's the kind of football I see. That's the kind of football I believe in. And, and, and um, he's the guy that, uh, that I like to, to Most of them. follow. Yeah, but then there's another guy that I admire a lot, and he's, he's just the way he does things are totally different. And I'm trying to pick up a few things from there. It's been awesome. Did it? Oh, all right, yeah. I, that's a good call, actually. Um, very underestimated. So is, is, um, if you can put it outside the box, there is no more outside the box. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, it's, it's really interesting and, and, and attractive. Do you, aspects. do you, um, by watching a game, Manchester City play or whoever who are playing, do you ever get any tactics from that? Do you ever, do you ever, you know, I mean, apart from obviously getting your coaches back and know, but you know what you knew anyway as a player and playing with other managers in today's game. So, for example, if you were watching a Man City game, let's just say, and you see sort of uh, something happen within that game, would you import that into your current day? Oh, or definitely. definitely you, yeah. I mean, for me, watching football since I was a kid, it was never just. But when I was younger, yeah, I didn't know much about football. When, when it was just fun. Gotcha. But since I started understanding football and, and, and thinking about the next move and you know, the coach and everything, every game I watch, it's to take something out. So it's a learning it's not, it's not. If Messi's going to take a ball and there's six guys and put it back then, not for me, that's not what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at transitions, I'm looking at. How the ball got to him in the first place? Yeah, exactly. The overloads, the, the, all those details which I'm going to tell because for some reason it's. Of course. It's a bit of a. Um, a never ending, a never ending of discussion. Course. And but I think yeah. it is, isn't it? Football always will be. There's always going to be new, new things, new things are going to happen, new tactics, is, and new manager. In, in football, in football, there's nothing wrong with nothing right. Yeah, of course. It's, it's, it's whatever, the works, it's whatever works for you. Yeah. If you're good enough to understand your quality of your players and how to input and implement your, your, your philosophy into them, you'll be successful. You might not win leagues, but you will achieve what you're looking for. But, you know, it's, it's, it's 
ongoing. I see, I see, I see football like, um, I don't know, sometimes they ask me, oh, football is simple, it is simple. And now I just don't. I try to move 18 pieces at the same time. Mm. And it's, it, it, it's complicated. But really and sometimes I have to change them pieces mid game because something didn't work yeah, or an injury. Or... Be, yes, I mean, an example would be the last game we played against Victoria Masters. We, we had some players missing and then. And we tried something. Good score, man. It's quite exciting. But we, we're not, we can't talk about that today. We're not allowed. We have to wait for the next uh, game of the week. Okay, uh, only a few more to go on this section. Um, do you think you would make a good referee? I think so. I think so. Um, I think I think I would because players hate when referees whistle so much. That's, that's the worst thing you can do to a player. If you start whistling too much all the time, stop, 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 stop. That's, players don't like that. Players just want to play. And then when something is obvious, when it's not, you know, then. They don't mind. Best referees in the world do that, actually. The top referees in England, they, they, let, the, they let the game run. Of course, you know, when you're a football player, the worst thing you can do to an athlete is to interrupt his freedom. Yeah. Whether it be with the ball or without the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing I would, I would, I would do with uh, many other referees. Is sometimes we have those referees who are too strict. You know, like that. Any, any kind of foul, any kind of contact, they just, they just stop the game if you're waiting in the game. I totally agree with you on that one. Uh, if you were offered a job as a coach outside of Gozo at the moment, is it something you would consider at this stage of your life? Listen, um, in life you always have to be ambitious. You always have to dream, always have to see, to, to, to aim for, 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 for better and to get things. And I'll be lying as I know. You know so I'm always looking for that. And, and the opportunity comes, if it's the right opportunity, you know, we, we, we consider it, but yeah, definitely, it is. at the end of the day, the way I was as a player, this is the way I was, so that I want to be as, as, as a coach, always try to aim for the higher, and, and let's see where it take, uh, takes us, you know. Ancelotti's contracts are uh, two years. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 uh, that's a different, different, different kind of, kind of, um, different level, but I mean, different level, level would be for, for, now, for now, for now, mm -hmm. that's how I would say for now, because, you know, well, things, things change and, uh, and people improve and you never know today and yeah, tomorrow you don't know where you're going to find yourself and absolutely, and, and, you know, the, there are coaches that used to call championship clubs and these days they're coaching the Premier League in the course. So, you know, football it's, it's, it's not that impossible, to be honest. you just have to grind it and yeah. work for it. Absolutely. It's, you save your apprenticeship like everything, don't you really? It comes to you, those who, who you know, if you're good enough, you'll get your shot, I guess. If you're, if, I believe if you're good enough, the chance will come. Yeah. You just, have, you just have to keep knocking on the doors. That's all it is. Last question. Do you think it would be a good idea um, over here in Gozo if they joined the two leagues together instead of having a second division with five teams? Do you think it would be better to have one division with 14 teams? Um, on that question, yes. Absolutely. I mean, for me, a second division goes is a waste of time. It's a big waste of time, a big waste of resources, a big waste of, uh, I don't know, facilities. It's just, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, to have two divisions in a 30,000 population, I don't know. You know, it's like doing, you're doing a, a, a hotel on top of a, <laughs> on top of a, a sand without any, 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 any foundations. Yeah, foundations. It's just, it's just yeah. gonna fly all over the place. You know, yeah. for me, it's, there should be a one, one division definitely, and there should be a, a one division with, with more foreigners, in my view. And because at the end of the day, we need to increase the level of football, and then, and I'm not saying an element of more foreigners for that. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to uh, restrict the, the upcoming of the, of the young local local talents. So we need to find a balance between between. Uh, two things but definitely yes um, for me number one there should be a one league and uh, number two I think the top clubs uh, in goals of such as Nadora, Sigurd, Schalke uh, and, and the Perkins should be competing with all these leagues because they, I think they, they, they've reached a level in this, in this, in this island there is absolutely there is no more competition the absolutely. only competition is between them four so to be honest all you do a league with just four clubs 
know, would you would, would, would you consider? I mean, if you brought in fourteen teams like that, I mean, let's if you leave the relegation part for a sec. One of the coaches actually yesterday came up with something, you know, which is which which could bear fruit. I mean, it was also reasonably smart that you play maybe the first part of the season as one league, and then it separates off for the second part where maybe the lower the lower division go off and do their own thing, and then the top six or seven clubs then have their one. And if you did that, could that then also? I mean, would you think? Then would you think that one or maybe two teams then the promotion then is to go into the in, into the multi league? What a fantastic I mean what what a motivation. Definitely, definitely. I mean let's let's put it into into a financial prospect. If you compete in multi leagues, you are more prone to attract sponsorships. Yes, of course. And if I've got a company, I don't know, selling chocolate, you're playing in Gosetan League. The exposure in Gosetan League, it's much higher than it was before, thanks to you guys. The, to the to the TV and, and, mm -hmm. and everything, mm -hmm. but it's still not there. So I wouldn't be prone to, to investing into into a top team that plays in goals. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm playing in all these leagues, totally the coverage is totally bit bigger, totally different. The, the the amount of people that you can attract and, and, and the, the catchment is so much bigger. That, then yes, I would consider investing. So that's number one. It should happen. Secondly. The Maltese, the Maltese leagues, um, there is enough space for, for a couple more clubs mm -hmm. because the league, uh, because the island. Uh, to be honest, to play the promotion, to, to be promoted from the Gosetan League to the Maltese, that I don't see doable because it, it, are you gonna put two Maltese play you know, if they get relegated to Gosa? No, you know, no, no, so every year the two Gosetan yeah. clubs get promoted, then there will be no club playing here. Yeah. In the end, everyone's played over there. Everyone's been over there. So for me, the only two options, the only I think for the only two options for the future of this football here, there's only two options. For me. Either all the clubs start competing in the Monty League, or you divide the top four clubs to send them there, and the others play the local league here, and that's it. And then whoever wants to play Monty, they will apply later on if we take that except, you know, But as I said, those four clubs are wasting their time, 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 and time and money. money. Very interesting. It's a because really, level, really interesting the level, view. The level has, has, has changed. I mean, you can see now mm -hmm. the, the, the lower clubs and the second division clubs in the league against one of those four. Yeah, it's, it's massive. It's, 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 it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, you, you, it's like you're with all respect. It's not because um, they are not good or whatever. The level it is what it is. You know, you've got like everywhere else in the world. And finance is what it is. Exactly, the top clubs have got more money than the lower clubs, and of course they can track the players. Yeah. And unfortunately, the gap between the, 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 the players in this island, local and foreigner, it's, it's so big that unfortunately it's what it is. And, and, and you know, the only way is it's, it's really interesting, it, it's a really interesting view. So, uh, we're now going to do uh, two parts of Know Your Coach. And uh, this is the coach's choice. So, are we ready, coach? Okay, the first one I'm going to ask you Umbro or Adidas? Adidas. Blue or red? Red. Premier League or Serie A? Ha! Ah, Premier League. Jeans or tracksuit? Oh, definitely tracksuit. Pizza or pasta? Pasta. Fish or meat? Meat. Dog or cat? Dog. Beer or wine? Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo? BMW or Mercedes? Mercedes. Cappuccino or Espresso? Cappuccino. And the one I saved the last is the one we had the most fun with all the coaches yesterday. Broccoli or Sprouts? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what all the coaches did oh. yesterday. <laughs> Gold. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Broccoli. <laughs> Thank you, coach. Ombro or Adidas? Adidas for sure. Blue or red? Hmm. Uh, blue. Premier League or Serie Premier League? League. <laughs> Jeans or tracksuit? Hmm. Jeans. Pizza or pasta? Pasta. Fish or meat? Fish. Dog or cat? Dog. Beer or wine? Wine. 
Messi or Ronaldo? Uh, Ronaldo. BMW or Mercedes? Oh, this is the hard one. BMW, let's go. Cappuccino or espresso? Espresso. And the last one is a real top one. You ready for this? Let's go. Broccoli or sprouts? I mean, I think, I guess, all of the ten. The last one, I really don't know. Broccoli, let it be. Okay, well done. We'll find out how did he do. Seven. Okay. Well, listen, you did really well. And, Thank you. Uh, and thanks for joining us. Really Thank you. Thank great. You. We're good. Coach, thanks a million.